Hi, welcome back. Today we're going to take a look at solving radical and power equations. If you're in Algebra 1 or a beginning algebra class, you may only be working with square root radicals, and that's fine. This segment will still help you a great deal. So what do I need to know in order to solve these types of equations? Well, let's first determine what they look like. A radical equation will have a radical in it, like a square root or cubed root or fourth root, and you may see more than one. This little n here in the crook of the radical is called the index. If you don't see that little number, it's understood to be 2 for a square root. A power function could be a cube or a quadratic, you know, an x squared, an x cubed, x to the fourth. The only difference is you don't have other x terms. Like you're not going to have an x cubed and an x squared or an x squared and an x. You have one term with that variable power in it, and they're easier to solve. Also, we need to see how radical and powers undo each other. Let's first see how they're inverses, how they undo each other. If you have an x cubed, in order to undo that cube, to get rid of that cube, we have to use its inverse. So we would take the cubed root. Those two threes undo each other, and we would be left with just the x underneath. Likewise, if you start with a square root, let's say the square root of x, and again, remember, because it's a square root, that's an understood 2. To get rid of that square root, we would square it. These two 2's here, the square root and the square, are inverses. They will undo each other, and you're left with just the x underneath. And we have to write, assuming x is greater than or equal to 0, especially for the beginning algebra students, mainly because we can't take a square root or any even index root of a negative number, because even a negative times a negative will always equal a positive. As long as they're paired up and evens, you're always going to end up with a positive number. With cubes, fifth root, seven roots, any odd index radical, we can do negatives. So just a reminder there. And last but not least, let's take a look at this one. We have the fifth root of the binomial x minus 3 taken to the fifth power. So again, the power and the root will undo each other as long as the number is the same. And we're left with what's underneath the radical called the radicand, x minus 3. So let's do a couple of examples. Suppose we have this radical equation here. Now remember, the key to solving algebraic equations is to remember your final goal. Take your original equation, undo any of the obstacles that are in your way so you can whittle it down to x equals a number. Well, right now, my biggest obstacle is that radical. So we're going to get the radical alone by subtracting that 1 from both sides. Now we have the radical by itself. It's an understood 2 here. It's a square root. So to undo the square root, we're going to square it. But remember, if we do something to the left side of an equation, we have to do it to the right. So on this left side, the square and the square root undo each other, and we're left with just the radicand underneath, 7 minus x. 4 squared gives us 16. Now we have a linear equation, and you've been solving linear equations for a long time now. So we're going to get this x by itself by subtracting 7 from both sides. Then we get negative x equals 9, and then we're going to divide both sides by that understood negative 1 there, and we get x equals negative 9. But don't celebrate just yet. We have to check our answer. Now, the reason we have to check it, it's always a good idea anyway, just to be sure that you got it right. It helps leaving the test knowing whether or not you got it right, correct? But anytime you have an equation where your original problem has restrictions, if you're in Algebra 2 or Intermediate Algebra, we call it domain, a restricted domain. But anytime you have a restriction, like, in a rational equation where there's fractions, remember you can't have zero in the bottom of a fraction. That's a restriction. So you have to check it, make sure your answer didn't give you a zero in the bottom. In the real number system, we can't take a square root of a negative number. So we have to double check and make sure that our result did not give us a negative number under here. We have to make sure it works. So we're going to plug in our result of negative 9 in for x. Remember, a negative times a negative gives us a positive. So we get the square root of 16 plus 1 equals 5, and the square root of 16 is 4. So it works. 4 plus 1 is 5. So don't forget to check your answers. Now, with power equations, 
I can tell this cubic here is a power equation because I only see one term with the x cubed. If you combined all your like terms and you only had one of those, then it's a power function. So again, we're going to whittle it down, undoing everything to get x by itself. So let's subtract 4 from both sides. We get 2x cubed equals negative 20. Now we need to get rid of the 2. It's being multiplied, so we're going to divide both sides by 2, and we're left with x cubed equals negative 10. Now we need to get rid of the cube. Remember, the inverse of a power, that cube, is going to be the radical, the cubed root. But if we take the cubed root of the left, we're going to have to take the cubed root of the right. So this cubed root and this cube undo each other, and we're left with x. And here, when you take a cubed root of a negative number, which means is, is valid, okay, remember that that's valid, as long as the index is odd, we can take out that negative and just leave it the cube root of 10, which does not reduce. So that would be our final answer. So now I want you to try. We've got a radical equation and a power equation. So go ahead and pause the video, give them both a shot, and when you're ready to see the results, hit play. Pause it. All right, here we go. This one is radical because you see the cubed root that we have here. So remember, in order to undo it, we need to isolate it. We need to get it by itself. So since this is 2 times that radical, it, just like if it was 2x, it's understood to be 2 times x, 2 in front of the radical, 2 times the radical. So we're going to undo that using division. So divide both sides by 2. So these two divide out to 1. So we're left with just the cubed root of x plus 5 equaling 3. And the inverse of a radical is its power. So look at the index. We've got a cubed root. So we're going to take the power of 3 to both sides. And these 3's undo each other, the radical and the powers. And we're left with x plus 5 equals 27. And then subtract 5 from both sides. It's a nice linear equation. And we get x equals 22. Since we're dealing with a cubed root and not a square root, we don't have to check our answer. Um, because you can take a cubed root of a negative number, but you can't take a square root of a negative number. So 22 in there will be just fine. This one is a power function. We see the variable taken to a power, an exponent, but there's no other variables. You don't see an x cubed or an x or anything like that. So we can isolate this x to the fifth by adding 13 to both sides. We have 4x to the fifth equaling 20. And then dividing both sides by 4, they divide out to 1 leaving us with x to the fifth equals 5. And remember now to undo this power of 5, we're going to use its inverse, which is the radical. So now we're going to use the fifth root of both sides. And so the 5's reduce, and we're left with x equals. Now, I often see people putting in a 1 here. So be careful. Remember, um, powers and roots, radicals, are talking about how many times you multiply something by itself, not adding. One added to itself five times is five, but one multiplied by itself five times is still one. One times one times one times one times one is one, not five. So this is as reduced as it's going to get. There you go. So how did you do? Not that bad, right? Once you determine all of the pairings that undo your obstacles as you whittle down those equations, solving algebraic equations really isn't that bad. Just know what your pairings are, know what your goal is. So if you have any questions on the power functions or the radical functions, feel free to watch the video again. Find other videos online. There's plenty of them out there on YouTube or other places. 
Um, also, check with your teacher, check with a tutor, check with your friends. There are a lot of resources. So don't let your pride keep you from passing. Believe me, you are not alone. So be sure and ask questions, okay? We'll see you again next time.